state uh, space heating and ventilation. So in last class we have discussed about the uh, heating of buildings. So various sets of uh, techniques to heat the building. What is the necessity to heat a building? First of all, a way is required when it is required. So what are the methods we have to heat the building? Such kind of things we have seen in uh, previous class. Now today we are going to discuss about what are the methods that are available to transfer the heat, which is generated from one point to the point where we are going to utilize the heat. So that is the basic context. So coming to this necessity of studying such kind of space heating and ventilation methods. So being an energy auditor, you should have proper knowledge on the mechanisms which are to produce heat and where the heat energy is mostly required and where partially required, where it is not required. And the heat produced, it should be utilized properly and there should not be any loss of the heat which is generated. So, because of this reason, we are studying this uh, HVEs, that is the ventilation. So, heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems. Now, coming to this uh, transfer of heat methods, so for the benefit of the students here, I am giving this uh, running notes so that, so that you can make utilize of this particular running notes also for your uh, future reference or study purpose. So, coming to this introduction, the heat transfer, this is the process of a thermal exchange between two that however we have uh, studied in our uh, previous classes so transfer of heat whenever there exists a uh, hot body and a cool body always uh, heat is transferring from uh, heat body to cool body so that is the case so the temperature difference between these two bodies so this causes the exchange of the heat from one area to another area so generally the net heat transfer between two systems is from hot to cool system. The same thing we have already seen in our discussion now, sorry. So, this heat transfer is particularly important in buildings for determining the design of the building fabric and for designing the passive and the system necessarily to deliver environment conditions for a minimum consumption of resources. So, already we require some portion of heat to be generated that we have. So, we will be required to heat. How we how we are generating the heat that already we have seen. But now, what is the necessity, particularly in studying this heat transfer as a specified topic? So that is, based on the study of this particular heat transfer topic, then we are going to design what kind of fabric material we have in a room. So that this particular fabric, what you are using, it must withstand the temperature of the room where you are going to operate it. So, the design the passive and active system necessary to deliver the required conditions for the minimum consumption of the resources. So always we are trying to have more output when compared with the input, or the condition as for electrical engineering, always output is less than input. So that the difference between these two we are having in the form of loss. So always our intention is to minimize the loss such that the efficiency of the overall system which is trying to be improved. So in this condition, in this condition, there we are having the minimal requirement of, of the thermal combustion resources such that so there we are going to have the minimum amount of heat energy loss so that amount of the source power required that is also to be minimum. So that is the necessity of studying this particular topic now. Okay, power is being generated by with the help of electricity, with the help of uh, firing the coal, with the help of firing the oil fuels. Then once the fuel fire is generated or thermal energy is generated, how we are going to transfer? So there exist uh, different mechanisms to transfer the heat energy from one point to another point. So first one is conduction. So conduction is conversion. Third one is radiation and fourth one is phase change. So these are the four mechanisms we are using for the transfer of the heat. The thermal system is a function of dynamic relationship between these mechanisms. Now first of all we are going to discuss about conduction mechanism. The conduction is the diffusion of internal heat within a body as a result of temperature difference across it. So, this particular example can relate to our human body also. 
So during summer seasons, outside temperature is very hot. Whereas come to the season or winter season, our body it seems to be in a and compared with this uh, outside atmosphere. So there we are going to feel some uh, fever sensation, even though we are uh, perfectly healthy in our body condition. So internally, the body, which is consisting of uh, the temperature, because of having some difference of temperatures available in two mediums, the transfer of heat is taking place. Here, the body means it is an object. So as for this uh, conduction topic, we are thinking this object. So this is particularly important in buildings where the temperature difference the inside and outside of the building, such as in a heated building during winter seasons. So as we have discussed now, this uh, outdoor temperature, indoor temperature, these two are playing important role in transferring the heat or exchange of the heat. Suppose we are switching on the heater in our room. Definitely the room is heated up and compared with this outside temperature of the room. So this is the temperature. Conduction is one of the main potential heat transfer mechanism by which the internal heating or cooling can be lost to the outside, resulting in high operating costs, so high carbon emission and occupied discomfort. So this is the conduction. Already I told as we are going to apply this conduction principle to our human body. So the outside temperature is low and the body temperature is high. Definitely we are going to get some discount. Then the mathematical formulation of this conduction. Now let us consider a body. So this is the body, which is consisting of cross section media A and thickness of X. Now here one side temperature is a T1 degree centigrade and another side temperature is T degree centigrade. And we are trying to play the conduction. So how much amount of heat that is conducted in two surfaces are opposite phases at a time of seconds is given by which so K minus T2 into small t divided where K is the thermal conductivity constant of the material. T1 and T2 they are the two temperatures on it is corresponding edges of the material what is selected. And if it is fit for the transfer of the heat, then A is the cross section area and it will be the So, by this principle, we can calculate the heat converted to surfaces. Then, after this, for cooling materials, it is sometimes through that the conductivity is expressed by the value of U. So, generally, the reciprocal of the sum of the thermal resistances of the body plus its and outside surface thermal resistance. So, as a heat comes to the thermal conductivity, here we are taking U as a parameter that is expressed for this conductivity. Then, the residual value of thermal resistance of the body plus and the temperature difference between two surfaces inside and outside surfaces of thermal resistance. So, those surfaces thermal resistance difference that we get. Temperature is more actively expressed by a materials R value. So, which is the reciprocal of its thermal resistance and does not include the surface. As we are seeing this, the conductivity is always expressed in terms of the reciprocal of thermal resistance. The conduction can be inhibited by insulating materials which have high thermal resistance and so help to reduce the heat transfer between the inside and outside. Let us take the bulk of your room. Inside the bulk, the bulk of the it has the inside surface, and out the next side of the bulk, which is directly contacting the outside, uh, uh, outside atmosphere, that is called as outside bulk. So, in between these two, this one is having some property of absorbing heat also for certain purposes. Now, as of this particular case, some portion of heat is being absorbed. Definitely, there exist losses in the walls of the building also. Limited by insulating materials, which have a high thermal resistance and so help reduce heat transfer between inside and outside. 
how to utilize the some kind of thermal dissipating materials in order to reduce the total amount of heat loss. Suppose the wall inside the room, which is, which is provided with best insulating material, that is the heat insulating materials you have placed on the surface of the wall. Definitely, the heat with the inside wall that is very very small, so that the heat that is handled outside the atmosphere that is almost negligible. So, like that, by thermal material. Then also be achieved by the thermal mass of building components. The thermal mass describes the ability to store and place heat energy. Firstly, whenever the insulating material that has a low heat absorption property, then this will have a good insulating material for the heat. The thermal masses can be used to even out relation in external and internal conditions as temperature pipe and release it in the same form. This can be true for an even and a deep extremes in thermal conditions. So here we are trying to reduce the total power loss that is happening in terms of heat power. So this is about convection. Then second method of heat transfer is convection. Convection is the movement of the fluid such as air by advection and diffusion. So this is very really important mechanism to design the buildings where air movement is necessary in order to achieve moderate internal temperatures, reduce accumulation of the moisture, water and other gases that can build up during occupied periods, then improve the comfort of occupants. So these are the three principles we have to keep in mind while we are going to place some heat transfer mechanism that is because of conversion principle. Temperature requirement, so not too heat temperatures are required, not too cool, moderate internal temperatures are required. Here we are using convection principles and this is also helpful in reducing the accumulation of the moisture or odor. Whenever there is a cool room and there is more crowd of the people, automatically it is going to accumulate gases and moisture is going to be increasing. That is causing some discomfort. So, in order to improve the comfort of the occupant of this room, we are going to utilize the heating of the building. Then, in this process, in this process, the total heat transfer mechanism purely depends upon the moment of the air, which is working at different temperatures. So, primarily, we have studied in our real room. So, whenever the heat is getting, whenever the air is getting heated up, automatically it is moving towards upside. And the air is being cooled down, automatically that is moving towards earth, to moving towards the uh, floor of the room. So, based on this principle, definitely we are going to say there exists two different temperature airs existing. One is on your floor, that is a cool, cool air, extremely and are not actually that the reach of the room, the exist on temperature A. The temperature between these two that is implies the transfer of the that is now here so within this process here we are going to take the heat is transferred by the flow of hot and cold air currents. So this process by heating of water by immersing heater or heating of the building. Then the quantity of heat absorbed by the body by conversion process that is purely depends upon mainly on the temperature of the heating element above the surface and upper the size of the surface of the heater. Now it also depends on the width of the heater. 
the amount of heat that is dissipated is given by the formula h is equal to a into b minus b where a and b these are the two constants of and hot surfaces and t1 t2 are corresponding temperatures of the heating surface of the fluid which is expressed in terms of kelvins then it is the transfer of the heat from a hot body to cold body in slight time without affecting the intervening heat so at the steep law the heat dissipated is expressed as capital h is equal to 5.7 into e k into t1 by 100 whole power 4 minus t2 by 100 into whole power 4 which is expressed in terms of watts per meter square so within one meter square area of the room transfer so this is the amount of heat that was wasted by this particular heat emission mechanism now whereas k is the radiant energy and e is called as emissivity of the heat emission. then air moment in the building force or natural the force means whenever we are going to switch on the fans automatically with certain velocity the air is made to blow from roof towards floor it comes this natural force that is applied and the roof the roof and when there is which is revolved in the sky that is used to transfer from Our windows and entering into the room that is called as the natural air. So two kinds of air we are having. One is forced air and one is natural air. These two are utilized for heating up the building with the help of transfer of heat taken by the air. The natural air moment can be either wind driven or either by force. Then accurately predict the moment of the air within the buildings. is extremely complicated and can require the use of computer and systems so currently we are trying to utilize this gain that is getting controlled automatically then we are going to utilize the computational fluid dynamic model software so that then we are going to have some feedback and the feedback is getting compared with the existing reference matching shows so that we are coming to common conclusion if there is no error we are proceeding the same if any errors are there then by taking the feedback and the error signal we are trying to rectify the total magnitude of the fluid mechanism that is working properly or not then third principle of the heat transfer is radiation so radiation so this is related to a particular uh, color of the body suppose we are having a black colored surface definitely that is going to absorb the heat and that is trying to liberate the total heat that was absorbed so except this black color remaining colors are having less heat absorption capabilities not only that whenever that absorbed body is kept in cool temperature automatically it has to radiate out most of the heat energy from its body now this is the principle that is used for radiation mechanism for the heat transfer the difference of the amount of radiation emitted and absorbed by a body at a given moment it may result in a net heat transfer which will produce a change in the temperature of the body then the range of terrestrial temperatures experienced within the building environment is relatively small and relative to the temperature of the sun this range is cold and so radiating at a long wavelength compared to the sun so this is the principle how heat is being transferred so when compared to the temperature of the sun the remaining other elements or the remaining other bodies that are existing in this environment they are to be assumed as the cool bodies so because of having the temperature difference between sun temperature and the body as per from some to yeah. so this anomaly allows us to categorize thermal radiation as a short wave solar radiation and a terrestrial or long wave infrared radiation 
So in our illumination topic, we have seen there exist different types of lights. Different types of lights are available with the different wavelengths. So out of this, only particular waves only we are going to see without naked eye. So that is ultraviolet rays we are going to see. So visible light that is having certain range for its uh, corresponding uh, wavelength periods that we are going to see. The total heat that is generated by the solar radiation and total radiation that is getting absorbed. So there is a difference between both environments. The surface in the building environment will tend to absorb the solar radiation and emit long wave infrared radiation. This difference also produces the effect such that greenhouse effect. The atmosphere is relatively transparent to the solar radiation. This means it allows sunlight to enter the atmosphere and heats the atmosphere of the air. Now, whereas come to this case, there is a basic principle of transferring heat energy from sun to air. So, earth is considered as a cold body and the sun is having the most high temperature. So, the heat is transmitted through light waves or from wavelength to waves. So, from so sun to air. So, that is the principle of radiation that is used for the transfer of the heat from sun to air. And these surfaces then radiates that heats as the long wave infrared radiation, which greenhouse gases tend to absorb rather than transmit. The result is that the long wave infrared radiation is trapped and heat accumulates in the atmosphere that is causing a warming process. See, now coming to this, the thermal optical properties of the materials are the function of their three basic parameters. That means transmittance, reflectance, and absorbance. Now, coming to this particular piece group, so whenever a body is considered a transfer, the surface is playing a role in transferring the heat energy from point to point. Suppose the surface of the body, it is too glazed. So, Total light, what you are transmitting on the surface of that. That most light waves, most of the heat that is going to be reflected to some of the points. Suppose the surface is somewhat easy and it is not a feeling. So, this particular heat energy that is being absorbed by this uncleaned surface of the body and the heat that is liberated out that is very, very small because of having some dust particles which are accumulated. Then, anything absorbs. The question is the amount of heat what you have projected on a particular body that is completely absorbed by that and is going to liberate any amount of heat on surrounding atmospheres. So, these are the three principles that are playing an important role in this radiation. Now, the ratio of transmitted, radiated, or absorbed radiation with the incident radiation. So, incident means the total amount of radiation that is sending. Means that quality has heat power, there is an incident. And the amount of the heat that is transmitted, transmitted heat divided by incident heat, radiated heat by incident heat, absorbed heat, finds three ratios of this That are completely different from wavelength and the angle of inclination of the radiation. Now, here this is the concept of why this angle is coming into picture. That means during the morning hour, the sun is falling to the earth, they are inclined with the surface of the earth. They are moving towards the solar rays, they are particularly passing the surface of the earth. And the heat amount that is also more when compared to the morning 6 o'clock time or some o'clock time or 8 o'clock time like that. Just after 12 pm, as we are moving towards the time, 12 to 1, 12 to 2, 12 to 3, like that, the sun position is changing from vertical axis towards some inclined axis to the axis. So, the solar is falling also, they are getting 
thinking. So angular incident radiation that is also playing important role. The patterns change as in space. For example, changing from the state to gas state, gas state to liquid state, the application of the water is making. Now that is also causing some so these two are different mediums. For example, the water that is going to be above. And this absorbs heat, producing a cooling effect, and when it condenses, it releases heat. So this principle we have seen in case of uh, thermal power plants. So thermal power plant, see this principle. The heat that is generated is being absorbed by the water, and that is converting its shape into moisture or steam. Then the steam is going to strike the turbine veins, and after finishing its duty, it is falling as the water droplets, so that it is losing its heat in its process. This, uh, this is an important fact in refrigeration also. Okay. Uh, refrigerated gases is absorbs heat from the cooling medium. And they evaporate when they can reach the condense, they release heat which is ejected from house. So this is the mechanism that by the space means changing its phase, to gas phase or gas phase to liquid phase. So like that they are in its phase of after control this heat transfer. So we are following some heat transfer mechanisms, just now we have discussed. Okay. So simply we are going to transfer this basic piece of control mechanisms. In order to reach the so we should have some controls also that are playing important role in heating. More heat transfer gains. So that means, first one, it may be locally by manual or automated thermostats. Switches or tabs. Then, second one, generally by manually or automated thermostats, switches or tabs. Then, third one, building management system. So, these are the three mechanisms we are using the transfer of the control. Just locally, simple example, the AC which is available in your room, that is known as a local. Suppose there is a central AC, there is a large function or large building or restaurant. So there is only one particular AC which is going to serve the total building or even purpose of that large building. That is building systems. But in this building system, there is a piping mechanism in each and every room that we have seen in the previous class. Building control systems often require. We verification once the units are completed and occupied. So, we can place some heat control systems. So, according to the requirement, we have transferred the heat to this particular room. So, how many persons are going to reside in a particular room or a house? Whether the heat control systems you know, place, they are working properly or not, with the occupancy of this particular room, it has to be re verified. After the room where the heat control mechanisms are provided, so that has to be reduced. Then some systems may require tuning as heat low and but area do not always come back to design expectations. This this one will be getting deferred with a room after the size is more. Definitely, we are not going to have proper required. Heating or cooling uh, conditions. So, we have to reverify that particular cases. The occupant training, occupant training can be helpful to optimize the performance of heating systems, and the occupant can be appreciative of a law of a degree of local control. And whenever we are uh, looking at this particular mechanism, we have to see that the local occupant he is also trained in order to change the required temperature control mechanisms in order to get comfort working. 
he, he, he has to be trained to control the eating of police. Then coming to this afternoon activities. So afternoon meal is the maximum point where we are going to be comfort. So if a limit is certainly crossed, automatically the comfort conditions are turning their shapes into discomfort. So <laughs> afternoon temperatures is also important to be discussed. So the human thermal environment is not straight forward and cannot be expressed in degrees. So it depends upon his mentality, we are able to say a person who is going to feel comfort at what conditions, at what conditions he may be feeling as a discomfort. So from person to person it is going to change. So it is not at all possible to express everything in a standard units. So nor can it be satisfactorily defined by acceptable temperature ranges. So if this particular standard degrees, human comfort is there. So such kind of restriction is not at all available because of the mentality or the body conditions of person to person. It is a personal experience, depends upon the criteria and it can be different from a person to another within this age. So there's no reason for this. Then environmental factors, the air temperature, air velocity, radiant temperature, relative humidity, so all these things which are governing the comfort of a person that is from the environmental side. So coming to these personal factors that are governing this uh, comfort and discomfort conditions of a human, they are clothing, metabolic heat, then well-being. So these are the three things which are facing the comfort of a human. So coming to this thermal comfort of a building, for this we have seen when people are dissatisfied with their thermal environment, so not only it is a potentialized health hazard, it is also impacts on the on their ability to function effectively and their satisfactory at work, a likelihood people between customer and so on. Then, as per some IS constraints of 7330, this is defined the thermal comfort as the condition of the mind which expresses satisfaction with the thermal environment. This is called a thermal comfort. So all the things that are related to the human mind and the body language, the behavior of a person, so that is going to decide whether we are feeling comfort or not. So according to this ISO definition of thermal comfort, thermal comfort is the condition of the mind which expresses satisfaction with thermal environment. So either it may be cool condition or either it may be hot condition, Thermal comfort may be to define levels. Now, the human thermal environment is not a straight forward and cannot be expressed in degrees, already we have seen. So, it can be a personal experience. So, for example, a person walking up in states in a cold environment, so he is uh, risk to vary a cold that might feel too hot. So, this phenomenon we have seen is that so, even though outside temperature is cool, then we are wearing a woolen jacket and we are trying to climb chest. So that because you are doing some work, your body is going to liberate some heat. So definitely you are wearing the coat and then just don't be transferred from this uh, body to outside environment as your woolen coat is acting as an objection to stating material. So you may be feeling that uh, it is uh, somewhat hot. As your body is feeling too hot, automatically this also temperature, you may be feeling it as a too cool. That is basically the So similarly, the health and safety executives, which is suggested that an environment can be said to be achieved reasonably with comfort when at least 80% of its occupants are thermally comfortable. So because of parents of relaxation, here they are going to say that the out of the total 100 persons available in your room, for example, if at least 80% of the occupants are saying that is thermally comfortable. Then we can say that the provided thermal environment in the room is good. It means that the thermal comfort can be assessed by surveying occupants to find out whether they are dissatisfied within the thermal environment. So it is purely depends upon the human psychology. So this is thermal problem. So first one is environmental factors. They are air temperature. Then 
heat velocity, then same one is the radiant temperatures. So these are the things which are going to pass the environmental factors, air temperature, outside temperature is somewhat high, body temperature is low, that is causing some comfort, or body temperature is high and outside temperature is low, that is also causing some thermal thermal discomfort. So this is the difference on the amount of the air. Coming to this air velocity, the air is flowing on your body with certain velocity, so we may be feeling sometimes a chill feeling. So, such kind of things. Suppose we are moving by a hard, hot object, there also our body is going to feel a sensation like the heart. So, immediately our body is going to sense, immediately our brain is the same that, so it is the environment condition is somewhat cool or hot, that is completely inside the yeah? human brain. Then, temperature is radiant temperatures. So, radiant temperatures means so the temperature of the surrounding includes pressure speed generating equipment. Sun aspect, and this is generally expressed as the mean radiant temperature MRT. So that is related to uh, so uh, anatomy of the body. So what is the total average weight of the sweated body, and how much is the temperature surroundings? How the surroundings are being? So such kind of things we are going to take into consideration. So which can be approximated by the computer. So any strong more direction of radiation such as radiation from the sun. So angle of this solar rays falling. That is also very important though that we have seen the this topic. Such that in the afternoon we are feeling more heat sensation, in the evening and morning we are feeling light heat sensation. So coming to this relative humidity, the ratio between the actual amount of the water vapor in the air and the maximum amount of water vapor that air can hold the air temperatures. So this is expressed as air humidity. So how much water vapor it is carrying with the divided by the total water vapor carrying capability of the air at a particular temperature. This is defined as relative humidity. The higher the relative humidity, the more difficult it is to lose heat through the evaporation of the sweat. So sweating is also a physical phenomenon, it is related to another person. So here humidity is more, that means the surrounding air carrying more moisture. Automatically your body that is not going to heat in the compound sweat. So this you know, we have uh, in our life. So during summer seasons we are going to feel outside temperature is somewhat hot. So your body is working at low temperature, humidity is also very really low. So your body is radiating out heat through form of the sweat rays. So coming to the winter season or rainy season, outside temperatures are somewhat cool when compared with the body temperature. When the humidity is more, your body is refusing to get the heat from your body to the form release of the sweat. Then personal factors. These are also playing in deciding the person. Now here clothing. So according to the season, we have to wear the so, dust coating is also important. During rainy seasons, we are seeing the first which are needed to preserve some portion of the air so that our body is not going to create no hot sensor. So, during the seasons, we have to take great force so that the body temperature is maintaining at a particular magnitude so we will not feel any sick. Now, Now, when I come to this particular one, the factors are clothing. The cloth insulated. The cloth insulates a person from exchanging heat. <coughs> exchanging heat, but the surrounding air, the surrounding air and surfaces as well as affecting the loss of heat to the evaporation of sweat. Now, the clothing can be directly controlled by a person. That is, they can take off or put on the chocolate. So, whereas environmental factors may be beyond their control. So, this is the major issue 
we are going to see the importance of the flowing. Now, whenever we are feeling sweat, then we are going to remove the jacket. When we are feeling, it is somewhat convenient for us, uh, so that we are going to continue wearing of the jacket. Then metabolic rate. So metabolic feeling is cooler than a person who is exercising. So here also, this phenomenon we have seen. So morning times we are going for walk. So after certain time, our body it is going to warm up, and there we are going to feel the temperature is really releasing out in the form of sweat. That was a person who is sitting stationary. Definitely, his body is under rest condition. The temperature level it is maintained constant, so that there is no release of more sweat when compared with the person who is exercising. So this is called as metabolic heat. Then well-being and sickness. So it depends upon the common factors of the body. And here we are going to define a person who is healthy, a person who is uh, feeling somewhat, uh, <coughs> who is feeling some uh, problem with his uh, uh, health. So he will be having some problems of uh, feeling sweat or feeling chill. So that is. So there is a common cold and flu, so which can affect our ability to maintain a body temperature of 37 degrees at the core. So this is the normal temperature. So where we are going to say which is a physical one. If we are, our body temperature is crossing 37 degrees centigrade and above, definitely we are going to feel it is a fever sensation. So we are going to say that our body is not feeling well. So because of sickness, even though the environmental conditions which are well designed, but as per our body condition, we are going to see and we are going to feel that the temperature of the surrounding is not properly designed. So because of these things, definitely we have to see the fact of being and sickness also, while we are discussing about thermal activity of the room. Then other contribution factors can include such as the food and drink. So, assimilation, this can be before difficult where there is a higher outdoor indoor temperature gradients and the state of health. Now, here the food and the drinks, what you are consuming, that is also playing a vital role in the feeling of the comfort and discomfort. And some countries which are colder, they used to drink uh, some kinds of uh, drinks in order to keep their body warm. And some cold, some hot countries, they are going to drink some other kinds of uh, drinks in order to keep their body in cool states. So that is also depends upon other contributing factors. In addition, thermal comfort will be affected by the thermal environment is uniform or not. So suddenly there are increased uh, clouds which are accumulated. The temperature of this particular environment is going to suddenly come down. So that is also a vital uh, factor that is influencing the thermal activity of particular home. Now, for example, so drafters and heaters can feel a sore face or frozen back effect or the hot feet or cold head and hands effect. So draft fans and heaters. If you are sitting in front of the heaters for a long time, our face is going to be appearing as, finally, uh, our face is uh, appearing as a, so completely different face. That means, now the total water content from the body is getting evaporated. Your face seems to be somewhat folded. Suppose you are sitting inside this cool environment for a longer time, you, as the total, as the bones of your skin that is absorbing moisture, so they are appearing to be somewhat fresh. So there is a difference we can see. Some environments, if it is too cool, our uh, hands that are going to chill, so that we are feeling the fingers are getting cramped. Then thermal anesthesia so goes beyond this, proposing the hedonic quantities of the thermal environment. So these are determined as much by the general thermal state of the subjects as by the environment itself. Then if, if you simply now we can say that the cold stimuli with the freeze able as present by some who is warm, rest while the warm stimuli will be experienced as pleasant by someone who is poor. It is a generalized rule what we are following. As we are feeling hot, we used to take cool drinks. As we are feeling it is too cool, we would like to take coffee or tea. 
in order to feel comfort. So everybody they are doing medicine. Then introducing a special component to this, it can be, it can, it can for example, be pleasurable to warm up our cool hands around a warm up. Just we are taking a cup of tea or a cup of coffee to warm up our body when we are feeling this a cool sensation. Then controlling the thermal comfort. So these are the factors that are controlling the thermal comfort. So environmental monitoring and control. So this is automated or usual control mechanisms we are going to do. Adapting or changing clothing. So it depends upon the season, we are going to change the type of the clothes we have to wear. So during the during winter seasons, cooling clothes we are going to wear. During the summer seasons, we are trying to wear a cotton clothes for the feeling of the comfort. Then allowing flexible working hours or changing the start and finishing times. So depends upon the working, uh, depends upon the environmental condition also, we can change our working times. Suppose morning time it is too chill, we can extend our working times to some other time. So like that we are going to have some flexibility in order to shift the working hours also. So adjust, uh, adjusting the tasks. For example, allowing break or reducing the length of the time people are exposed to particular conditions. If some persons who are working that is exposed to the out atmospheric conditions, so depends upon the weather condition, we may be giving some relaxation for them to have some break so that their body it is not going to get uh, feeling some discomfort because of uh, these particular environmental aspects. So that is to be provided in work periods. Then coming to other cases, providing information, telling people what sort of conditions to expect so that they can dress and they can behave appropriately. Just like uh, atmospheric alerts. So that we are, we are seeing the forecasting of the weather. So they are warning us and they are going to suggest us. So be ready for this particular climate conditions. Like if we are going to have so many uh, suggestions, so many warnings advice from this uh, weather researching the uh, offices. Then providing or allowing persons equipment such as uh, desk fans. Suppose if it is too sweaty conditions, so providing uh, desk fans that is somewhat suggestible in spite of having a partially air conditioner units. Then separate people from sources of discomfort. For example, putting heat generating equipment uh, such as ICT equipment in separate rooms, insulating pipes, preventing drafts and so on. That was the, depends upon the person's requirement. Separate the persons who are working in a particular area, so they can be shifted to some other location. So that the heat requiring people, they should be kept in one room. The cool requirement people, they are going to be kept in another room. Then providing protective clothing to the persons, this should be at least a reserved option. Then predicting thermal comfort. So how to predict? So this particular temperature, this is somewhat comfort for us. The predicting. So the temperature may, it is going to increase, temperature may be trying to reduce. So how to predict this? So there are a great number of techniques for estimating thermal comfort. These are, so effective temperature, equivalent temperature. So effective temperature and equivalent temperature, these are the two indices we are using to determine whether the environment conditions are comfortable or not. So, back to bulk to global temperature, the resultant temperature and so on on the charts existing showing predicting comfort zones within the ranges of conditions. However, as per the British standards of ISO 7730 and BSEN ISO 10551, these are suggesting that thermal comfort can be expressed in terms of predicted mean vote and percentage people dissatisfied. So, period, so predicted mean vote and people these are getting dissatisfied. So percentage people dissatisfied. So these are the two indices they have taken to express the comfortness of a person. So PMB and PPD were developed by Professor Ole Fanger. These are based on the research undertaken by one university and technical university of Denmark. The research was carried out to find out if the people felt comfortable in different conditions and this was used to develop equations that would predict comfort. 
So just they have got for some research activity in the Denmark, and based on the expressions given by the uh, persons who involved in this research survey, and uh, they, they, have, they have tried to develop some mathematical relations to define the comfort of the human. The equations taken into two accounts. One is in terms of air temperature, in terms of mean radiate temperature, air movement, humidity, clothing, and activity levels. So all these things just now we have discussed. Then PMD index. This is an index that predicts the mean vote of the group of people voting and how comfortable they are in the environment. And PPD. This is taken as a function of PMD. Then. Where non-uniform conditions exist, so multiple assessments may be necessary, and in complex environments, computational field diagnosis analysis may be necessary to accurately assess thermal comfort. Then, how to regulate these generations? Regulations. There is no legal equipment to achieve a minimum or maximum temperatures within a building. Now coming to this, uh, because of having the no certain limitations on uh, minimum and maximum temperature levels, here we are going to take the building regulations and they have defined it as the different particles, part J, L, F, such kind of things for safety and uh, provisional information, the consumption of energy, standards of construction, carbon emission and ventilation requirements, but they do not prescribe temperatures. Then, the health and safety executive suggests that an environment can be said to achieve reasonably comfort and where they are having 80% of comfort, that will be comfortable. And regarding these cases, the temperature in workroom should be normally be at least 16 degrees Celsius unless much of the work involves a severe physical effort, in which case the temperature should be at least 13 degrees Celsius. So these are the regulation and the conditions they have provided. The least temperature it should be 16 degrees, or sometimes it depends upon the physical work, what we are doing, then we can go up to 13 degrees Celsius also as a minimum temperature. So these temperatures may not endure reasonable comfort depending upon the other factors such as air, air movement and the relative humidity. So there are no legal restrictions to maximum temperatures, however, there is a strict regulation of heat stress. So previous guidance of HSC suggested that the thermal comfort might be achieved between 13 degrees centigrade to 30 degrees centigrade depends upon the activity of the occupants. Now this is the case, that's why we have, uh, whenever we are controlling the temperature in our room, the air conditioners, the minimum temperature for some cases it was given for 16 degrees centigrade as a minimum and maximum it was fitted with 30 degrees centigrade. So, because of this particular survey done in uh, done in Denmark, so they have taken the minimum temperature that is uh, making us uh, happy to work with 60 degrees centigrade. Our uh, physical work is going on, then we can keep it at a minimum 30 degrees centigrade. And to have some human comfort, the maximum temperature it should not be crossed with 30 degrees centigrade. So, this is the thing we are trying to use for our uh, heat energy transfer and Heat rate. These are the things which we can see. Then, so we can go for a ventilation and uh, air conditioning mechanisms. So HVAC. So this is a new world we are trying to introduce uh, in energy auditing. That is a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. HVAC. Heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems. And already we have seen this board in the high voltage AC transmission, HVAC. Now as per this particular um, energy audit subject, whenever we are calling about HVAC, we should recollect this as heating, ventilation and air conditioning. Now this is the technology of indoor and outdoor regular environmental comfort. So, the temperature differences, once again, we are trying to take into account 
in order to design this HVAC technology. So it is, <coughs> so actually the main aim of this one is to provide thermal comfort and acceptable indoor air quality. So not only that is looking at thermal comfort for you. So whenever we require cool, then it is going to provide cool energy. When it is requiring hot, then it is uh, generating hot energy. So like that, it is going to give the cool as well as hot energies. Then this is based on principle of thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, and heat transfer. Now here another word is going to come. Refrigeration. This is also sometimes added to the fluids abbreviations. So your uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning is now added with capital R, which is nothing but refrigeration. So H V E C R. So uh, this ventilation is adapted. Then this is called as H E C R heating, air conditioning, uh, uh, refrigeration. Then H V E C is an important part of residential structures such as a single family homes, apartment buildings, hotels, and senior living rooms. Then medium to large industrial areas and office buildings such as skyscrapers and hospitals, on ships and submarines, and in marine environments where safe and healthy building conditions are regulated with respect to the temperature and humidity using fresh air from outdoors. So not only maintaining the humidity, not only maintaining the comfort of this particular occupants in the room, but there should be always a sucking of the fresh air into the room where the occupants are available. So the room air should be in fresh condition. Next, ventilation is the process of exchanging or replacing air in any space to provide a high indoor air quality which involves temperature control, oxygen refreshment, and removal of moisture, odor, smoke, heat, dust, then airborne bacteria, carbon dioxide, and other gases. So just simply we are uh, assuming that air condition it is to provide only cooling. So most of the people we are thinking like this. So just in order to get some cool temperature, we are utilizing AC bar. This AC, it is doing other purposes like as we are providing proper ventilation. So this is going to make oxygen available in the group that is a refresh and it is removing the moisture, it is removing the odor, smoke, it is removing the heat, it is removing the dust and because of the accumulation of this uh, moisture, there is generation of the bacteria. These bacteria are also going to be eliminated from the room. So these are the advantages of having ventilation in air conditioning system. So this air ventilation removes unpleasant smells and excessive moisture that introduces outside air, keeps interior building air succulent and prevents stagnation of the interior air. Even though there exist AC available or not, all houses extreme top of the building. So uh, the point where the wall and the roof is meeting at that position, then we are going to provide some ventilation box. So this time we try to observe where the wall of your room that is getting added with the uh, roof. So at that location we are providing some small air, air holes. So that is called as ventilation. Whenever the air that is uh, heated up is released from the body, as the heat is increasing in the body, in the temperature, in the room, automatically the hot air is going to move upwards so that through the ventilation provided, the hot air is moving down. And to the door things regarding this uh, district of the system, then coming to this uh, history of this HVAC system, how this HVAC system is developed? So HVAC system is based on inventions and discoveries made by Nicole Lowe, Michael Faraday, Willis Carey's career, and uh, Edwin Road, and uh, so on. So out of this uh, Willis career, so most of this uh, AC is what we are seeing that is going to appear to this name carrier, carrier ACs. Blue Star, Carrier, Samsung, so right like that. So this carrier is the uh, uh, one of the scientists uh, who has discovered this HVAC system. So heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. So the multiple inventions within strand frame represented the beginnings of the first comfort air conditioning system 
which was designed in 1902 by Alfred Wolf as a part of New York Stock Exchange. So while Willis Carrier equipped that uh, printing company with the process of AC unit in the same year. So this uh, Coyne College was the first school to offer its AC Coyne in 1899. So coming to this uh, heating, so how we are going to heat a particular room with the same air conditioning unit? How we are going to get cool temperature with the single same unit? So that is heating. First of all, the heaters are the appliances whose purpose is to generate heat. Now this can be done by a central heating system such as a system consisting of a boiler, furnace, or the heat pump to heat water. And that heat is uh, absorbed by the water is converting straight into steam, or air in the central location such a way that the furnace room in a home or a mechanical room in a large building. The heat can be transferred by convection, conduction, or radiation principle. That means here we are going to burn. So this is an example for heat generating unit, central heat generating unit. So where we are going to have burning of the fuel. So this is the chamber where uh, fuel is kept, and here will be burned. Then the burned, the heat energy generated because of burning the coal or the fuel here. Then the water available inside this chamber that is getting heated up, and that is converting its shape into steam. Then it is going to pass through the pipes, and they are going to transmit that heat to the required areas in terms of uh, the principles of convection, conduction, or Radiation. Any one principle that would be used in order to have the amount of power heat generated by this boiler. This is the first generation heat generating system. Now here, the heater exists for various types of fuels. So that is including soil fuels, liquids, or gases. So any other type of heat sources is electricity. So that are generally using uh, heating ribbons composed of uh, heat resistance wires. Just like immersion water heaters, so these immersion water heaters that was used. So immersion water heaters we are using for heating of the water. There is an example for uh, utilizing heat, utilizing electricity to generate heat. So in this case, so this principle is also used for base mode heaters and portable heaters. So electrical heaters are often used as a backup or supplement heaters for heater pumps. Suppose there is a sudden uh, uh, completion of these solid fuels or liquids or gases, then these uh, solid fuels are not directly available. So that we are going to utilize electrical power or electrical heaters. We are going to utilize for generation of the heat. Then this is acting as a backup. So generally they are using uh, uh, solid fuels or uh, liquid fuels for heat generation. The principle is also used for this. So electrical system they are taking another way. The heat pump gained popularity in 1980s in Japan and United States. The heat pumps can extract heat from various sources such as environmental air, exhaust fans, and from ground. So all of you have seen these things. So environmental air, how air is going to be taken from environment, and that is going to be uh, circulated. That is going to be distributed. The total heat energy to the required utilization purpose. Everything we have seen, and coming to this uh, heat uh, extracted from the ground is nothing but the thermal geothermal. The geothermal uh, energy extraction we have seen in previous class. Now, initially, these uh, heat pumps that are used in HVAC systems were not used for moderate climates, but with improvements in low temperature operation and reduces loads due to the more efficient homes. They are increasing in popularity in cooler climates. So this uh, heat generating <coughs> heat generating pumps, these are used in cold climate areas. So cold countries they have more used this particular heating pumps. Then coming to this distribution of the heat generated by these heat pumps, as already we have discussed, this uh, heat distribution is done with the in the form of water in the form of the steam. So just we have seen the previous one, the heat which is generated by this. Uh, Mechanisms they are transmitted to the uh, required areas. That is done with the conduction, conduction, the radiation. Then the heat generated by this heat 
pumps. So the heat is transmitted through the circulating motor and the heat is transmitted from one point to another point with the help of the steam. That steam is uh, circulating in the pipes. So this thing we have seen uh, today in today's class also. Then through A. So the heat which is uh, generated and transmitted to certain rotation, then we are trying to blow some air. So some air is going to be blown on the hot surface of the air. A hot body, then the heat is going to be transmitted from this particular hot surface body to the environment. So that is the transfer of heat. Then what are the problems associated with this transfer of heat through water or steam or air? Then the problems associated is the use of furnaces, space heaters and boilers as a method of indoor heating. This is resulting in incomplete combustion. The fuel may be completely burned, the fuel may be are not completely burned. This is the two issues we have to see. And if solid fuels we are using for the production of heat by burning this wood, definitely there is going to form the carbon monoxide gases, some coal or the dust particle or the ash particles that are going to form, the nitrogen gases, nitrogen dioxide gases that are going to form, then a volatile organic compound, that is a coal, ash, everything that will come out as a byproduct of this. Um, burning in the solid fuels. So there is a uh, danger associated with this heat in the usage of the heat pumps. So incomplete combustion causes where there is insufficient oxygen. So the inputs are fuel consists of various uh, contaminants and the uh, outputs are harmful byproducts. The most dangerously carbon monoxide this is the most dangerous gas that is released so which is a tasteless and odorless gas with severe adverse health effects. If carbon monoxide we are going to breathe it, inhale it for a long time, definitely our health is going to be less quiet. So there is a problem associated with this. Then how much amount of uh, parts per million that is ever, uh, that is permitted? So without proper ventilation, the carbon monoxide can be withheld at concentrations of 0.1 percent. However, at several hundred ppm carbon monoxide exposure it includes headaches, Fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. So these are the health uh, hazards we are going to get if we are going to inhale the carbon monoxide that is uh, liberated from the burning of this solid uh, fuels in the hot house. Then coming to these ventilations. So when, uh, in addition to these uh, particular problems, they may be having the transportation of the oxygen to the blood. It is also getting decreased. The hemoglobin that is also getting uh, polluted by inhaling this carbon monoxide. Then ventilation. So ventilation is a process. Just now we have seen what is the importance of ventilation. So in order to have the fresh air, the oxygen, uh, fresh air is going to circulate in your room so that you are going to inhale the fresh oxygen. Then uh, the total moisture available in the room that is going to be taken out. The heat is maintained properly. So such kind of benefits are we have seen with this ventilation process. Now, how ventilation is being is provided? Just now we have seen that is mechanically or forced ventilation or natural type of ventilation. So this is the figure where it is provided with the ventilation. So mechanical or forced ventilation. So the fans which are going to revolve. So these are the fans which are revolving. So that with certain amount of force we are trying to take the hot air from home and that is uh, forcibly sent out the atmospheric in, uh, conditions. So HVAC installation exhaust for 12 storage buildings. So this is the photograph that was taken from heat exhaling or ventilation exhaust which is placed for 12 storage building. Then natural ventilation. So natural ventilation means so here the persons who are sitting so this is provided with more number of uh, windows, more number of doors so that the air which is going to circulate freely through this particular room through the open windows of open doors. So this is called as natural ventilation process. So this natural ventilation process, it is uh, to be designed while constructing the room. So how many number of windows we have to provide, how many number of doors we have to provide in order to get more natural ventilation outputs. So this is the figure which was taken. Then coming to this uh, Airborne diseases. The natural ventilation, this is a key factor in reducing 
some kinds of health hazards. So a bone pains such as so tuberculosis, the common cold, influenza, and uh, mains. So these are the some problems that are associated if there exists accumulation of a or the humidity is more. So these are uh, tuberculosis. So generally we are calling as TB. If uh, we are not having proper uh, proper natural ventilation, then the person he may be likely getting tuberculosis or uh, sometimes he may be getting cold flu and it is going to further uh, diseases developments. So opening doors, windows and causing and sorry and using ceiling fans are all ways to minimize this uh, accum uh, accumulation of this uh, the moisture and by this we are going to maximize the natural ventilation process and this is going to reduce the risk of a bone contaminations. So natural ventilation requires a little maintenance and this is inexpensive. As we are designing number of windows, number of doors, and the placement of the doors, placement of windows, and there is no problem. So that there is not the expensive. So the maintenance is also very small, just you have to clean the windows. Yes. Then coming to air conditioning. So air conditioning. So this is the typically fresh air it is going to be taken by 10% of the room requirement always it is going to take fresh air into this room. So coming to this uh, refrigeration cycle that is used, the hot air which is going to be taken, the hot air is getting liberated to atmospheric conditions, the cool air is passing into the room. So it is consisting of a simple stylish diagram of the refrigeration cycle, there exists a condensing coil, expansion valves, then the operator coil, Compressor. So one which is the condensing coil, the heat which is being exchanged here within this uh, condensing coil, and number two expansion valve. So here the heat, the hot air which is passing through this nozzle, where that uh, temperature, the pressure is going to be increased so that correspondingly we are trying to reduce the temperature of this particular body so that it is converting its hot temperature into cool and that is passing through this evaporator coil. So through this evaporator coil, we will be feeling some hot air that is releasing out. And once it is uh, passing through this core, that is a compressor, again that is getting compressed and that is getting heated up. So that heat energy is liberated to the atmospheric conditions. So this is the basic principle of uh, uh, providing cooling. So this system represents trans in cycle in the gaseous state. The compressor pumps the represent gas up to the high pressure temperature. So this is the thing just now we have discussed. Then in variable climate conditions, the system may include a reversing valve that switches from heating in water to cooling in summer. Then the reversing valve. So reversing valve is placed. Just what we discussed in this uh, hot to cool, it is getting reversed so that from cool we are trying to extract hot. So that is taken by this air conditioning units. Then free cooling. So free cooling system can have very high efficiencies and are sometimes combined with the seasonal thermal energy storage so that the cold of the winter can be used for summer air conditioning. So reversal process, by using reversal switch, heat can be converted into cool or cool can be converted into heat. So this is the common mechanisms. Now we are going to use the economizer mode which is sometimes called as free cooling mode. That means the loading of your AC or river refrigerator is getting reduced with this economic mode. So economy. So economy means we are trying to save some amount of money. That is economic mode. Then suppose we are going to have comparison between the package of the system of AC, that is window system. So window AC versus split AC. So the difference between these two, that is uh, the all air. So that is called as the air conditioning system with the combined outdoor condenser and the operating units are often installed uh, as of now. So just I am trying to relate this one to our uh, Indian conditions also. This is a packaged air conditioner, that is a window air conditioner. It is placed in one particular uh, window area. I mean this split is a system, so the central unit and outdoor unit, two units are placed. So indoor unit that is placed inside this house and outdoor unit is exposed to the atmospheric conditions. From this indoor unit, we are going to extract that the cool air inlet, and this outdoor unit is going to throw away the heat of the room into atmosphere. So that is the difference. Now, coming to this window AC, the total package, 
that is the total everything is packed and it is placed at only one particular window area. And these are the cases. So dehumidification, that is air drying, sorry, this is air drying. Total air available in the room which is carrying more moisture content, that is called as humidity more. As humidity is more means we are going to have some uh, headache sensations and so on and so on. So that we have to always reduce this humidity so that the air is being dried by this air conditioner so that the ambient temperature is going to be maintained. So this moisture is collected at the bottom of the evaporator in the pan and removed by the piping or a central drain onto the ground itself. So working up easy as we have seen. So coming to the maintenance that is also very really important. So always you have to clean this evaporator channels then uh, air filter channels and everything you have to clean them periodically in order to avoid this, uh, formation of the formation and growth of the bacteria. Then energy efficiency. So this is very, very important as uh, energy auditor. We have to know this particular concept. In 1980s, the manufacturers of uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning system, they have developed and making a process of the system and they have taken some steps to make the system as more efficient. So this was originally driven by raising energy costs and has more recently been driven in increased awareness of environmental issues. So in order to reduce the total amount of money involved in operating these centralized or HVAC systems, then here we are trying to uh, reduce the total energy consumed. So some more efforts they have placed in order to reduce the total energy consumption. So heating energy. So in this past, water heating was more efficient for heating up the buildings and was standing in the United States. So this is uh, done. So some buildings of post heating system, that means we are using exhaust fans. So exhaust fans we are using in order to take out the hot air inside the rooms and uh, that is going to be thrown out to the atmospheric conditions. Generally we are using these exhaust fans in uh, washrooms and uh, we are using these exhaust fans in um, kitchens. So kitchens we are using <coughs> so in order to eliminate hot air circulation in the room. So in order to have the better air conditioning levels and energy saving up to 15 to 20 percent and uh, total so there is a similar conditioning units. So similar conditioning we are using. So these are the benefits of using um, thermal uh, sorry, heating energies. So ground source heating pumps. So regarding this case, we have seen uh, geothermal temperature extraction. So that is the best example of this ground source heating pumps. The total temperature difference between the building as well as the earth layers that is being used for the transfer and uh, heating up of the building or cooling up of the building. Then for example, the environmental condition, the heat building up in uh, minus 70 degree Fahrenheit or minus 57 degree centigrade this is the lowest temperature and the highest temperature is 57 degrees centigrade. So this is related to uh, foreign countries, so where the temperature survey has been taken. Then ventilation energy recovery. So energy recovery system sometimes utilizes heat recovery ventilation or energy recovery ventilation system that employ heat exchanges or enthalpy wheels to recover sensible or latent heat from the exhausters. Then air conditioning energy. So this air conditioning energy and the heat pump or device move heat rather than convert it from one form to another. So thermal efficiencies do not appropriately describe the performance of these devices. Then coefficient of performance. So this is also an important case that is measuring the performance of the HVAC system, but is uh, dimensionless because dimensionless and has not been adopted. Then energy efficient ratio. This is traditionally being used to characterize and characterize the performance of many HVAC systems, energy efficient ratio. So this is the case, this ratio is based on 35 degree centigrade or 95 degree Fahrenheit, outdoor temperature. So to more accurately describe the performance of air conditioning and equipment over a typical cooling season, that is seasonal energy efficient ratio, that is yes, EER. Now this is introduced in here. Likewise, Different types of uh, systems, they are using different types of uh, standards in order to maintain the performance is expressed. Then clean air delivery rate and filter performance. 
That means all the filters that are available in this uh, HVAC system, they are used to clean the air which is in it, so that in order to avoid accumulation of the dust, and these are going to prevent the formation and growth of the bacteria. So HVAC system that is used in bulk for uh, industrial purposes as well as uh, household purposes also. So internationally, they are taking some standards, so provides the constraints so concerning uh, sustainability issues from the initial stages of the design process, mm -hmm. the building and the plant life cycle to be considered to the work, so with the moving and operating costs from the beginning of the design process. So these are the things. So various countries, they are using various standards. So this was uh, taken here. And as far as this particular HPAC system is considered, so this time, as per Indian standard, Bureau of Indian Standards, Bureau of uh, Energy System, BGS, so that is giving a star rating for all electrical applications. That means, for example, this one you try to observe, either ACs, everything, maybe coolers or washing machines, they have been provided with a small sticker on the surfaces. There is just five stars. Out of these five stars, how many stars it is being drilled? So that much more efficiently this device is going to work and its efficiency is also more. So that is the reason why we are purchasing any highly rated electric device. So this time we try to verify what is the star rating. If the device is having a two star rating and the same rated machine which is having a five star rating, that means the five star rated machine is working properly and working with more efficiency when compared with the low, uh, low stars rated. Even though this high stars rated machine is costing slightly more when compared with this less stars rated device, it is better to purchase as a one time investment this high stars cleaned, high stars cleaned device purchase is better so that the running cost, operation, operation cost, running cost, or maintenance cost, all these things are getting reduced. So just by cleaning it is a low cost of a two star machine, but the long range operating cost, maintenance cost or the bill, what you will indicate that will be more. So, so now one more you try to indicate the people also as an energy audit person, energy audit subject to a person, try to suggest the people to purchase a device which is having more stars green. So today we are going to conclude this class and uh, next class we are going to discuss about the topics of uh, so topics related to is uh, yeah so insulation how we can provide uh, insulation and uh, cooling different types of cooling loads electric water heating systems and finally the inference of this particular subject heat space uh, space heating ventilation how far this is useful for energy conservation engineer and how he can suggest some methods in order to get energy conservation. So this uh, we are going to see in the next classes.